Welcome to the Evolved Caveman Podcast. I am Dr. John, the guide for your heroic journey towards greater health, success, and most importantly, happiness. And now, on with the show. Hey everybody, this is Dr. John back with the latest episode of The Evolved Caveman. And I got to say, I am really, really excited to have with me for this episode, Connell Barrett. Connell is the author of the best-selling book, Dating Sucks, But You Don't, and the founder of DatingTransformation.com. He helps men attract their dream partners by being authentic. What? Connell has appeared on Today, Good Morning America, and Access Hollywood, as well as in Cosmo, Maxim, and my old favorite, Playboy. He's the official coach for the Highly Dating app. Connell, welcome. Thanks for being here. I appreciate it. Uh, I'm as evolved as I can possibly be today. I'll give you my most evolved self. Thanks for having me. Tom. Well, yeah, I appreciate it. I, I had a guest on a while back and he said something about the evolving caveman. And I was like, oh, damn, I like, missed it by that much. You know, like that would have been the perfect one, but You're you know, you take one your shot. verb tense away from having it. You, you never stop. <laughs> you never stop evolving. So exactly. do me a favor. So by the way, for those, this is the book, Dating Sucks, You Don't. And I got to say, Connell was nice enough to have a copy sent to me, and I was really blown away by by the material. So to start us off, just tell us about your dating kind of history. Why, why, why are you into this? Yeah, so I essentially coach and help my younger self. I was a very introverted, shy guy who had a lot of cool things happening in his life. I had good friends. I had a good job. I had it all together. I could shoot 77 on the golf course on a good day. But there was something about the whole dating piece. I didn't know how to flirt. I doubted that I was attractive to women. I didn't know what to say. And I just, I was never that guy in my teens, 20s, well into my 30s. I was just never that guy who could succeed with women. I felt too shy and too introverted. And I just felt like, hey, I'm not enough. I'm not alpha male. I'm not ripped. I don't have the big muscles. So I I essentially was very lonely for a long time and settled for relationships I wasn't that into. And the big inflection point moment for me, John, was I got married to the one woman who said she wanted me. And then Mm. she dumped me nine weeks after our wedding. Mm. And I didn't even want to marry her, to be frank. She didn't want to marry me. It was two people settling. But the reason I like a great foundation for a relationship. Yeah, you should have heard our vows. Do you Tom Barrett, <laughs> promise to settle and just do this and go through the motions? Um, but when, when she left me, I realized, okay, I need to make a change. I was, I was in my red Honda Civic driving to the department store to return all of the wedding gifts that were in my back seat. They hadn't even been opened yet. They were, oh, it was that new. And I remember thinking, okay, I've got to make a change. I don't know what, I don't know how this works, but I need to figure out how to date, how to have some options. So I don't have to settle and I don't have to feel rejected. And that's basically sent me off on a five-year journey to work with all these different coaches, everybody from cool self-help coaches, Tony Robbins coaches, but also sketchy pickup artists, everything under the sun. And I emerged out of this five-year journey with a very simple, uh, effective theory about what works with men and women, basically how to be, how to make authentic romantic connections uh, without any kind of pickup artist nonsense. Basically, it's about being your best, most authentic and vulnerable self with women and letting people like you for you. So wait, I'm confused. <clears throat> I thought picking up women was all about like peacocking and negs. Uh, no, that is a myth. Definitely a myth. For those, and, for those who have read The Game by Neil Strauss. Yes, right. Peacocking, wearing crazy loud clothing to get people's attention. Negs, yeah, the big those, floppy hat with the feather coming out of it and the monocle and the cape right, into the bar. Right. I never did the peacocking outfits. I did use a lot of negs and I was taught all that BS back mm-hmm. in the day. And uh, I'm happy to say it doesn't work and it didn't work. And no, you don't need to do those things. Essentially, women like you for you, as long as they're getting the best slash most authentic you and also the most uh, sort of courageous you because there are times we have to be brave and do things that scare us. So that's yeah. my journey in a nutshell. And so where are you now on your dating journey? I have a great girlfriend. I have a wonderful girlfriend okay. named Jess. And Fantastic. I met her last year, met her last year, practicing what I preach. <laughs> practicing and, and does she want to be with you? Concepts. And do you want to be with her? 
Yes, absolutely. I'm, well, okay, just, I just want to establish the foundation here because otherwise we might just stop the interview early. Yeah, I might start weeping to realize, <laughs> oh my God, that's, it's a shame. I mean, I, I was thinking about your, your wedding vows and like instead of I do, it's like, yeah, I guess so. <laughs> do you take you know, this the one? first one. Meh, I guess so. There's meh, a yeah, the, meh. <laughs> yeah. I joked back in the day that our that our nine week wedding was over so fast we fought for custody of the wedding paper. <laughs> oh, it, that it was, makes it me, was not I, funny at the time, but now I can yeah, yeah. It was, <laughs> but they say humor is tragedy plus thirty seconds. Okay. All right. You know, it's fill in the 30 like, seconds. That that's yeah. negotiable. But I think it's really true, right? Like after the bombing of the 9-11 towers, like someone has to make a joke of that, whether it's a year later or 10 years later. But I think that getting back to being able to laugh about it is a really, really important defense strategy that we can cope with the crap in the world. A great question to ask yourself about something that happens to you, whether it's dating or just in life, is what's funny about this? Or yeah. what will be funny? in a what will be. a month that's, or a year. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's a good one. So let's get into some of the, the myths about dating because those were fascinating to me to begin with. Absolutely. Probably the biggest myth that holds men back is this idea that you have to be really good looking or tall or rich six or pack. successful. Rich, exactly. yeah. you need I like six the, pack, the yeah. six foot, six pack, six figures. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And then exactly. it was funny because I had I have a friend that was that's a therapist who got divorced and she was dating and she was looking for a guy who had a phone, a car, and his own place. Okay. That so a different like a different nice... side of the spectrum, you know. Right. Nice try and, fact that if you can find Yeah, had a hard time finding that. Right, right. Well, the thing about looks is it's a self-fulfilling prophecy. <clears throat> if you're a really good looking guy, a society good looking guy then you're probably going to gain some confidence from the external world and then take more confident actions and feel more confident in yourself. If you're an average looking guy, if you're a George Costanza type, or if you're someone who's not super ripped, who's not really have that perfect lantern jaw, then you're going to tell yourself stories that say, you know what? I'm just not good enough. I'm not attractive enough. Women aren't going to like me. And then you're going to give off that lack of confidence and not take the actions that might lead to dating results. So it can become this really, this big self-fulfilling prophecy. So good looks are kind of like jacuzzis. Um, not necessary. Nice bonus if you have them, but way overrated. Women, women look at a man and say, okay, if he's good looking, great, but how do I connect with him? And what value does he have to bring into my life? So the great news is you don't have to be 6'2", you don't have to be really great looking to have a lot of really good abundant options in your dating life and to be able to choose a great girlfriend from, from some nice options looks are overrated and not essential. Yeah. I like the idea that that confidence is sexy and, and it brings to mind that idea of external validation versus internal validation, where I think most of us are looking for outside validation. Oh, you think I'm handsome? Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. Or, you know, Oh, you love my, Ferrari or whatever it is. And I think that that's a loser's game because we can never get enough external validation. And there's too many right. comparisons out there that we fall short on and far better to try and look at it from an internal validation point of view, which means go to your values, live according to your values, behave according to those values, which will increase your confidence, which increases your sexiness or attractability. Absolutely. And there are certain values that you can put into action in your dating life that sort of like if you imagine yourself, you're the coach of a basketball team, you're Pat Riley, and you can look at the values you have at play in your dating life. And you can actually pick and choose different values. I'm not saying changing your values as a man. I'm saying putting somebody else in the starting lineup and letting those values get you the kinds of connections and success you want. So well, and, Go ahead. and pardon me for interrupting. That makes me think of, you know, just as an example of a value to me, a, a high value is emotional management or emotional intelligence. Right. And if I go out and I'm dating after my divorce and I'm bad mouthing the hell out of my ex-wife and my anger comes across, which honestly, I think it did when I first started dating, when I was fresh out of the, that relationship. And I realized that this is sending the wrong value that I'm not behaving yeah. in accordance with my values. Because if I were really well, emotionally balanced, I wouldn't be spewing this kind of anger and resentment. 
And so I had to work on that to get that, you know, kind of forgiven, managed so that I wasn't spewing that kind of toxic emotion around. Absolutely. That's why pickup artists, techniques, tips, tactics, the surface, the surface level things, they're at most 20% of success with women in dating. It's the internal things that are going to inform your emotions, your confidence, the, what you give off to the world. That's 80% of it because you could have the best moves, the best lines, the witty things to say, but right. If you're, if you're all negative and feeling insignificant and, and, and resentful of your ex, guess what? That's going to come across in your energy and that's going to turn off the women you're dating. So my old coach used to always say, my, one, of my old, my, one of my best old dating coaches used to always say, we're always, we're always broadcasting out into the world who we are, our beliefs, mm-hmm. our values. It's always coming out. You can't hide it. So let's put values and beliefs in action that are attractive as hell and healthy and and emotionally intelligent and just let that let those good vibes go out into the world and women will say ooh i want more of that i agree completely i mean to what extent do you think that the i'm not trying to put this into a value but one of the things i realized is i have to be happy and content in my own life single and anyone that comes along is additive. Like I don't need mm. them per se for anything necessarily. I mean, I, there's a lot of things they can add to my life, support, emotional balance, conversation, companionship, sex, all that stuff. But I, I see a lot of people out there in the dating world that aren't, that, that are looking for someone else to make them feel better in some way. I, right. I mean, they're seeking can you external validation. Yes. Yeah. I think as men, the, let's call it a value or a, a psychological need, we all have a need as men to feel special, important, significant, right? There's different ways we get that. You can become a multimillionaire perhaps and feel that way. You can become, get six pack abs. You can be a good son. You can be a good husband. There's lots of ways to feel special and important and significant. One of the most powerful ways is to be attractive to women. If you're a straight single man or a straight man, and there's nothing wrong with that. It's okay to want to get that positive reinforcement from women. But to your point from a few minutes ago, you don't want to, you don't want that to be the sole source of your worth. You want the, your primary positive worth and self-confidence to come from inside, come from your heart, your mind, your actions, just who you are at your core one in 7 billion self. And if you get in touch with your value and worth, if you can prove to yourself first that you have offer something to offer women are significant, attractive to some women, then you're going to have that. You're going to be powered from inside. And then the external validation, it's a nice bonus when you get it, but you're not going to need it. You're not going to be a needy, eager guy who's like, oh, please like me, lady. Please give me your number. Please kiss me. You're going to hopefully want to have a really good, successful date with her, but you're not going to need it. And that sort of internal self-confidence and drive is intoxicating to women because do, do women want to be with a, a needy, overeager man or a man with a sense of himself and who knows what he has to offer and is looking for a genuine connection? She loves that second guy, what I call in the book, a radically authentic man. Yeah, I think... I, if I had to guess, women are attracted to men with a purpose, with a goal, with a vision, with meaning um, as one of those aspects. So I, I know there's more myths in dating, but there's a lot of stuff to get to. Um, so let's go over some of the practical step-by-step tips. So, and and this one is one that I, you know, I, I like that idea of kind of steal with your eyes. Like, I think it's a ninja saying or something, or at least that's what it is in my mind that, you know, you watch and learn so how does one approach in a, how does one approach a beautiful woman in a setting in a like a context in a bar in a public setting? Let me tell you a story. Let me answer that with a story. Okay. So when I first went out into the world over about 12 years ago to approach women, I was at a rooftop bar here in New York City with my then coach and wingman. And I barely ever approached a woman. My hands were shaking. I was nervous. Uh, I just wasn't sure that it was going to go well, but I wanted to take this action. And I saw a beautiful woman in a sparkly or silver, kind of silver, sparkly dress. 
beautiful brunette. And I looked over at her and I said, oh, what do I say? What's the line? What's the move? And my coach said, well, what's the deepest, most vulnerable thing you're thinking right now? What's the deepest, truest thing you're thinking? And I said to myself that Good question. she's re- that she's really beautiful and I'm, and I'm shy, but I'd like to meet her. He said, boom, there's your pickup line. In other words, don't use a pickup line, lead yeah. with vulnerability and congruence. So I walked over Truth. to her. I walked over to her and I'm like, yeah, what's the most, what's the truest thing I'm thinking? I said, Hey, excuse me. I'm actually really shy, but I had to meet you. Hi, I'm Connell. And as I was saying it, something inside of me shifted from I'm nervous and scared to, Oh, this feels so good to put that true authentic thought out there. And I stood taller and just sort of had a little swagger. I didn't know where I was coming from. And she looked at me and kind of gave me a, a flirty smile and said, Oh, sure. You're really shy, aren't you? Uh, Hi, Hi, I'm Amy. And it went great. And I walked home that night with her phone number in my phone thinking, wait a minute, you can just walk up to beautiful women, be yourself and get a phone number and a date. I got to put this in a bottle and teach it. And that eventually is what my book became. But to answer your question, it's about you approach with courage. And I had to use courage to go talk to her. And authenticity, putting your real self out there as opposed to some cool mask or pickup y type line or something rehearsed. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Yeah, I think that for 90, 95% of us, you absolutely have to approach with courage because courage is, by definition, getting through your fear, not the lack of fear. So we're all going to feel nervous, insecure, fearful when approaching someone we consider beautiful. And, And so I love what you said about kind of come up with the truest thing you can say. I would also add to that. I I love the three second rule, which was from the game, because I think that, you know, if you go into a bar and you see someone that's beautiful, you need to approach them immediately. The longer you sit and think about it, the longer you let that monkey mind on crack kind of do its thing. (laughs) Right. Ah, she's too hot for you. She'd never talk to you. You know, you're not worthy. All the stuff that comes up will come up. And, and I like that rule just in general of, you know, don't overthink it, just pick up the phone and yeah. call or just approach your boss and start the conversation or approach the woman and start talking with something honest and true. Right. And it, it, it I think that's, those are two good rules to go by. Do it quickly. Courage. Go from the gut. Absolutely. To me, every, every single man I've ever coached or who's reached out to me has wanted at least one thing. There's one commonality. Every guy wants more confidence in the area of dating, more self-confidence. And what I learned is that the way to get that is through courage. It's a, essentially courage is the currency that buys you confidence. I could not walk up to that woman that night, totally self-confident and feeling 10 out of 10 in the zone, but I could walk up to her while a little bit scared using mm-hmm. courage. And do that again, you do it again, you do it again, you start to get new evidence back from women saying, hey, some of them really like me and some of them don't and that's okay. And you start to get some references and then confidence comes later. But so I think of courage as, as, as currency that you put into the machine and boom, you get confidence later, not right away, but you do get it and it lasts forever. Well, and I think that's a great point, Connell. The, um, the idea that not every woman is going to think you are all that. Just like not, I I don't see every woman as beautiful, but you might see other women as beautiful that I'm like, yeah, she's okay. And and that's just human nature to me. And And I bring this up with a lot of clients that look, so, and I'll bring them to the really superficial. I'm like, what do you love in a woman? Like, what are you physically drawn to? What are you immediately attracted to? And we'll just go over like really superficial stuff like eyebrows, boobs, hair, black, blonde. I mean, whatever it is, right. you know, what, what, Women you, have what are you attracted to? I didn't, I didn't to? notice. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, cause you what? can go into detail about all this stuff and then say, okay, so realize that you have individual preferences. They're not, they're not good or bad. They just are. And understand that on the other side, women have those as well. And sometimes you're a match for those. Sometimes you're not when you're not, right. it's not personal. It's just, you're not a match for what they like. That's okay. Absolutely. So the philosophy I, I do I teach, think that's the initial attraction piece, right? Is that physical yes. look. Right. And the biggest mistake men make in dating, I think, or at least top three, is misinterpreting a woman not being into you for some sort of rejection or right. 
you're not good enough for me. Rejection. Hell to hell with that. Rejection is not a bad thing. I want you to embrace rejection. First of all, here's mm-hmm. a little secret. It's not really rejection. A woman you walk up to or have one date with, she's not rejecting you. She doesn't know you. Right. Uh, if my wife came down the stairs and said to me after seven years, uh, honey, you have a small penis. I never loved you. <laughs> and I'm leaving you for Fabio. Okay. That's rejection. Boom. I'll do some shots with you at the bar and try to make it feel better. <laughs> but an approach, a, a date or two, that's not rejection. To your point, John, that's, we're not a good match. We're not a good fit. Mm-hmm. And that's actually what we want. But what I mean is what I teach men is how to be radically authentic, how to be truly your true best real you. By definition, that person is going to be polarizing. That person is going to be very attractive to one out of three or four women and not the type of maybe three out of four. And that's fine. I want to perfect. be... Ba- ba- exactly. You don't want to be a, a watered down wine spritzer. You want to be a shot of Jameson. Not everybody wants Jameson, but women who want to do those shots are going to get intoxicated on that barrel aged you. So embrace the polarization. When a woman... When I'm not single right now, but when I was going out on tons and tons of dates, especially last year post-vaccination... Uh, I would get very polarizing responses. And I was fine with the ones who said, oh, you're, you're amazing, but I just don't see us as a fit. They don't like the nerdy glasses wearing guy, but people like my girlfriend love my type. And that's when the real attraction and, and connection happens on a deeper level. Yeah, absolutely. And I think it's one of the most important foundational skills to good dating is to reframe quote unquote rejection. Because I see so many people like putting out dating profiles on online sites that are casting this wide net. They want the widest net possible. And it's like a milk toast profile where they don't really say anything of value. They don't take any, there's just no chances taken in, in who like exposing themselves to the world. And I'm like, no, 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 no. Like we're not looking for a wide net. We're looking for a narrow net. You're looking to sort people out. You're not looking for a hundred mediocre matches you're looking for 10 fantastic matches absolutely you're looking to find somebody who is your type Mm -hmm. and also i think it's healthy to embrace a again quote unquote rejection i think Mm -hmm. it more of as information not rejection but let's call it let's use the r word let's call it rejection even that can be healthy for you here's a quick story a couple couple years ago i went to a park here in new york city with my client james and james had never approached women before so we go to the park. I get into wingman mode. So what do I do? Which is what I do. Go talk to her. Go talk to her. Go talk to her. And he was so scared at first. His hands were shaking. His forehead was sweating. <laughs> we walked up to that first woman at, in the park and it went well and she was friendly. And the next girl he talked to is actually in a bookstore. Pre-med student. They hit it off and he got her phone number. And he got one other phone number. So he's doing great. Then there's a woman sitting on the bench and I say, go talk to her. And he walks over, sits down next to her. She's reading a book. He comes back about two minutes later. He's got this big grin on his face. I assumed he had just gotten another number and and just was crushing it. And he said, oh, she blew me off. She told me, she told me to please go away. I'm reading my book. And he was laughing about it. He said, that didn't hurt. That was, I've been scared of that for 35 years. And that's for him when the floodgates opened. When you, when you realize that with dating, most of us look at dating as a win-loss. Look at an approach or a date as a win-loss. If you look at it the right way, it's a guaranteed win. Either you, quote unquote, get the girl, make a connection, which can change your life, or you learn a lesson or realize, hey, there's nothing really to be afraid of. She's just a cute girl on a bench who didn't want to have a date. A free country, go on with your day. Yeah. So that can really open the floodgates and realize, hey, dating, approaching, taking those risks, it's a win-win, not a win-loss. And, and I, I'm sticking on this because I think it's such an important topic because I think it holds so many of us back. And one of the other reframes that I'll use on that is I'll ask my clients to make the choice of telling themselves re- repeatedly that they are intensely curious about meeting new people that you just mm. want to get to know people's stories. You're not trying yeah. to get their number. You're not trying to get laid. You're not trying to get married. You're just curious about people. And it doesn't have to be women exclusively. It doesn't have to be women you find beautiful. It can be people of all shapes, sizes, ages, and colors. And when you have that approach, 
it changes your life because you start these little micro interactions with people. And if it works well, you both leave with a smile, which is a drop yeah. of positive emotional, uh, drop of positive emotion in your bucket for both of you. No, you and, just and said so something, I like that too. No, I, you said something really insightful and totally true. So essentially what I heard you say was shift from what's in it for me to what's in it for her. How can mm-hmm. I find her interesting? How can I learn who she is and what makes her tick? Think how that's going to make your next date feel. If you're focused on learning about her, what you said, finding, you know, being curious. Um, I tell my clients, find out what makes her fascinating. That's your goal for tonight's date. What makes her fascinating? As opposed to, will she like me? Will I get rejected? Right. Those are understandable questions, but those are that those monkey mind questions that do not serve you. And those are still going to come up just for those of you who are listening. Like you're still going to have these thoughts of, you know, oh, I'm going to, am I going to get lucky tonight? Just kind of watch them and let them go in your thought yeah. stream. Just like you can't stop the thoughts from coming, but you can change how you relate to them. So you just don't want to get hooked on those thoughts and overfocus on them and just turn it back to curiosity, turn the attention back to her, which is a great segue for the next question, which is how do you connect with a woman? So let's say you have the initial date set up or on those first few dates, how do you establish a meaningful connection? Right. Well, that's a great, that's it. That's the right question to ask. How can I connect with not how can I get laid? Exactly. Not how can I get (laughs) laid? How can I attract her? I I work in an industry teaching men dating success that still has a lot of these old school PUA quote unquote game type guys who who say, here's how you create attraction, here's how you get her chasing and all that stuff. And that's all mostly BS. Essentially, men and women, if you're on a date with somebody, she's already attracted to you. Nature handles a lot of this, right? Attraction is not a choice is an old saw from the dating industry. She can't help being attracted to you. You can't help being attracted to her. It just, it's just the Gal Gadot walks down the street. I can't help but be attracted to her. I'm sorry. It's just, it is what it is. Now, connection is a different thing. So in terms of how you connect on a date, essentially, it comes down to um, there's a, there's a big kind of superpower that I talk about in my book called man to woman communication. Man to woman communication is simply about connecting with women on that romantic man, male, female channel, which is about emotions. It's about teasing. It's about opening up and being maybe more vulnerable. Essentially it's about giving each other those tingly heart feelings as opposed to the logical informational wavelength that so many men men spend their life on in their job, right? If you're an engineer, if you're an accountant, if you're a doctor, it makes sense to be in a logical informational frequency. On a date, you want to connect in a more emotional, what I call man to woman place where, because that's where women live. That's where they want to feel. That's how, that's how you're going to connect romantically is get, and, and I'll give you some practical tips here in a second, but think of there as being basically two main kinds of ways we communicate in our social lives, not counting your family, friend to friend or man to woman, if you're talking about straight men, straight women. So we, the, the way that the reason why guys get stuck in the friend zone where you can have a, a, a date that seems to go well in terms of the conversation, but there's just no spark. It's because you were in that safe informational friend to friend uh, context, as opposed to the man to woman, emotional flirty channel. Does that make sense to you? It does. Give me, give us some examples of both if you can, because I, I think sure. for many listeners, this is going to confuse them because I, I think most men are safe in that rational, yes. logical problem solving side of their brain. And they're not very familiar or comfortable with that emotional side. Right. It's, it's it, First of all, it's as simple as putting a, making a clear flirtatious statement, putting a romantic card on the table and saying, wow, you look that dress, you look gorgeous in that dress. You look amazing tonight. Um, it's, it's something complicated about that as opposed to, hey, nice to meet you. How was your day? Hi, yeah. I'm Bob. Well, I think, yeah, making your intentions obvious right. up front. So yeah, it starts with clear intentions and understanding that, again, let's assume it's a first date. There are, there are certain things that happen on a date. There's a, there's a, there's un, there are unspoken contexts and communications so, and, and things you talk about. So talking about more emotional and fun topics like 
uh, each other's dating lives. You know, like one of the, one, a great thing to talk about on a first date is fun dating horror stories because we all have that. <laughs> uh, talking about something fun, emotional, uh, hopes, feelings, dreams, a little bit of flirting, a little bit of teasing. Sometimes, uh, you know, if a woman's running late for a date, she's like, oh, I'll be, I'm, f- I'll, I'm five minutes late. I'll text her back. Okay, but you owe me one drink for every minute you're late. And I like the good stuff. Yeah. So like basically proverbially pulling a woman's pigtails, not literally, proverbially, yeah. um, teasing a little bit. That's man to woman. Essentially, it's about emotions and good, happy vibes as opposed to here's, here's friend to friend. Here's friend zone. Oh, and, and, and then what year did you move here? And what, el- and what else do you do? And what's your job title? And what do you do for work? Yeah. What do you do for work? Here's a man to woman way to ask that question. Oh, you do this for work. Tell me what lights you up most about your job. What do you, you love go. about your job as an attorney? Now you're asking her a question that, that has her dig into feelings. So, and, and I do think you can combine, pardon me for interrupting. I do think you can no, combine okay. phrases like, um, what turns you on about your work? Yes. Yes. Absolutely. So it's, it's kind of, it's kind of sexual, but not really it's, you know, in the context that you're putting it, but, um, that's as close as, you know, kind of subconscious priming as I would get. By the way, John, it's really cute. When you look up, sometimes you look up and you do this thing with your eyes. It's absolutely adorable. (laughs) Okay. So that's what I'm thinking. (laughs) That's a man to woman type of statement, right? I just, I just made a flirtatious statement about you in a way that, yeah. it, look, you may or may not like it, but at least you understand what this conversation is about. I'm putting it yeah. out there and letting the woman say she likes it or she doesn't. And, Whereas and I think that's, oh, wait, let me hold on. Let me, because I think what you did go, there is go, go. you just, you were, you showed how observant you are. And, and that's a big deal. Like noticing little things like um, nails, shoes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, ways that they move when they bite their lower lip. I mean, you know, I love the way that you bite your lower lip when we're, when I'm talking, like, I mean, it's, it's, it's observance, right? It's, are you paying attention? The other thing I love is asking questions with the goal of eliciting positive memories. So what's some of the best concerts you've ever been to? What were some of the best first dates you've ever been on? What, what's your favorite place in the world? Because they'll associate positive emotions with you. When they call the memories to mind. Let me give you an advanced tip to that point that every guy listening to this can use, or a woman for that matter. This is not about just men and for men. Anybody can use these concepts. But you might say to somebody, uh, what's what's your favorite city in the world? Your favorite place to go? And she says, Paris. And then ask the question, why? Why do you love Paris so much? Because she's going to love it for a different reason than other people. And maybe she says, I love Paris because it makes me think of Uh, amazing, delicious food. And I love food and I love the culinary experience. I just love, lights me up. Then what you do as a man is you go into your mind and say, okay, maybe I've never been to Paris, but what lights me up the same way, whether it's food or whatever her emotion she's feeling, you can relate it to your life and say, oh, what makes me feel the same way? Because emotional slash romantic connection, a lot of it is about shared emotional experiences commonalities are a nice bonus. It's nice if we both have been to Paris, but maybe I have it and she has, and I'm going to say, okay, what's my favorite restaurant? What, what lights me up about food? And now we're connecting about the emotion rather than being, having gone to the same city. Yeah. And Connell, you're absolutely right. And, and it makes me think of, you know, I've worked with men for 25 years or so. And from a young age as teenagers, I've heard so many of them say shit like, I hate reading. I, I don't like reading. I'm not going to read. And, and it extends into adulthood where many men have limited topics that they get really emotionally engaged in. So for men listening, it's not just about dogs, beer, and football. Like part of this is having curiosity about different cities, different areas, different foods, different music, different things, because it gives you more ways that you can connect and engage with her. Yes. To those guys who say that, I say, you must grow. You must evolve and expand. And I'm not saying you need to read War and Peace, but you need to read, dude. You need, yeah. to, you need to be growing as a man because, again, I'm all about authenticity, 
That's not just be yourself. It's continuing to become more yourself. The highest, arguably the highest human need out there is growing as a person. And guess what? A man who's growing and reading and learning different things, he is going to become devastatingly attractive to women because he won't be able to control it. He's just got so much to share. So And on the other side, what I see is, because this to me comes down to growth versus fixed mindset in general. And, you know, women in the U.S. are responsible wives are initiating 75% of the divorces currently. And the biggest, one of the biggest complaints I hear is I can't connect with my man. And what I hear from the men is, eh, love me as I am, love me or leave me. And it seems that so many of us either never started or just stopped growing and learning. And to me, that's a huge problem. And it's an easy fix too. just decide to have a growth mindset and be more curious. Right. It's a, it's not something that has to feel like work. Look, you don't Mm -hmm. have to read Kafka. If you don't want do something else, take an improv class, take a cooking course, uh, sign up for tennis lessons, bicycling class, do something that is expanding your, your breath as a man, because guess what? It's what life's about. If we're not growing, yeah. we're, we're dying, at least we're metaphorically. Dying. And the more you're growing as a man, the more you have to give to women. And women mm-hmm. are so drawn to men who are, are evolved. Right on brand here for you, John. <laughs> and the more you evolve, the more attractive you become. And you're also going to be more fulfilled that way. So if when somebody says, oh, I don't want to read, they're, you know, take me as I am, they're justifying uh, uh, Maybe they don't want to get out of their comfort zone, or mm-hmm. they're just saying they're they're putting they're putting they're being content and they're not they're being lazy, frankly. So don't be lazy. Take action. It takes action and effort to just continue to grow and evolve, but it pays off. It pays off in your love life. I promise you. Absolutely. And and I would say one of the biggest reasons for men to get more curious about the emotional side of who they are, to get greater emotional granularity, to get greater emotional awareness and intelligence, to get more comfort in that realm, is this right here, is dating and finding a woman that is attracted by that. I mean, I can say, cause my fiance is, you know, we've been together six years. She's a therapist, yeah. but she is so turned on when I tell her how I feel that it's become a joke yeah. in our relationship. And now I'll say, Hey honey, I feel sad. And I'm like, are you aroused? <laughs> and then we just start laughing. <laughs> um, and I, because I don't really feel sad, I'm just kind of playing with her. And it's, it's part of the language through which women are aroused. Right. I mean, that's foreplay for many women. Talking, sharing, opening up your feelings. It's not a weakness. It's actually a form of strength. There's mm-hmm. a chapter in my book called, uh, are you manly enough to be feminine? I love and that. it's, it's about, thank you. It's about understanding that yes, most straight men, my, my guys are mostly masculine people. I'm a, I'm a more or less a masculine guy within reason. I love World War II books. I teach men how to get girls. That's pretty masculine. Um, at the same time, I have plenty of feminine characteristics. Mm-hmm. I like musical theater. I um, like talking about my feelings. I, I'm a good listener. I have some sort of brush strokes of the feminine. And that is something that will help you connect with women because a woman loves a complex person. You know, Walt Whitman said, I contain multitudes. Yeah, show women that. some of these, show women some of these multitudes. And there's, you know, you want a great first date, sure, witty, playful, romantic sparks flying. That's awesome. If there's also a part of that date where you're both just sitting there being really like emotionally naked, talking about feelings, fears, you're sharing yours, she's sharing hers. That can take that connection and make it so much deeper and give her a profound, powerful dating experience. Well, and it's like, so Whoa, rare. This guy is something else. I yeah. mean, when I was dating yeah. post divorce, one of the things I heard over and over from friends of women that I was dating was, "Where are all the emotionally intelligent men?" Mm. We, they're just rare. To some extent, yeah. they're unicorns. So be the unicorn. Right. Um, right. Well, okay. So this has been a great conversation. So let me go. <laughs> there's so many things to get to. Um, so we got about 15 minutes left. Do you want to talk about online dating profiles? Let's do it. 
let's give me some some ideas there because that's a, a pretty I, I think that's the way most people are dating in this day and age which makes sense to me um what are some of the tips that you have for a an effective online dating profile well the first thing is to be aware that there's a huge myth involved with online dating online dating is not dating it's marketing it's digital marketing until you have that first one-on-one -on -one date or maybe a phone date you're not really dating. You're creating a, a piece of digital marketing on your profile that's designed to get people to swipe right. So to that point, you want to think like a marketer. And I don't mean marketer in that sketchy kind of used car salesman way. I mean authentic, uh, high integrity marketing where you're being honest and real, but with the intention of what is going to get somebody to pay attention. So what does every marketer need to do? Focus on, it's, it's, it's not about me, it's about the audience. It's about what they want. So the biggest thing you first want to do is realize this profile on Tinder, on Hinge, it's not for me. It's so I need a picture of me with a big fish. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> yes, exactly. Exactly. Uh, a giant fish. <laughs> That's the secret. That's yeah. the secret. Um, by the way, the working title for my book was, it's not you, it's the halibut you're holding. Uh, <laughs> because, well, maybe they don't like right. halibut. Maybe they like trout. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Every single photo and every word on your profile should be intended to make a woman smile, to make her see how awesomely dateable you are, what a great catch you are, not what a great catch you're holding from the ocean that you just caught. <laughs> <laughs> so first, let's look at the big picture and say, hey, don't just take a bunch of random photos from your phone, throw them on an app and expect that to work because that's bad marketing. Uh, my book is called Dating Sucks, But You Don't. Because I once told a client about his profile, look, it's not that you suck, your profile sucks. You're awesome, but your profile is holding you back. So that's the whole idea here. Um, now, once we understand that shift, then you want to say, all right, let me craft a profile that essentially it's a photo essay. And that photo essay's title is, uh, look how damn dateable I am, <laughs> or look what a great catch I am, or look at my awesome, authentic life that I want to bring you into it because a woman is, is, is there to find a guy who, whose life she wants to enter and be part of. How do we do that? Um, here's a photo tip. I call this the one, two, three punch. Here are the first three photos on any dating profile. Follow these, follow this, this little thing called the one, two, three punch. And I think you're going to see matches and dates. First photo is a portrait of you from about the waist up looking first date, great, well-dressed, authentically smiling, looking at the camera. All right. That's portrait number one. That's photo number one. Photo number two is another portrait of you, but a different outfit, different backdrop, showing basically a different side of you. Maybe photo number one is jeans, t-shirt, no glasses. Photo number two is blazer, tie, and glasses and a different backdrop. Now you're showing women some variety. Oh, this guy's got different layers. And the third shot of you is what I call an awe photo, as in awe. He has a dog. <laughs> Aw, he's dancing with his grandma at a wedding. Aw, he's at the zoo. Something that tugs at the heartstrings. One, two, three, punch. Because the idea is, remember, we're marketing in a sense. We want a woman to say, oh, cool style. I like that first photo. Ooh, I, I like that he's there on the boat on the second photo or whatever. And then the third photo is, aw, look at him. I love his cat. It's so cute. Now she's going to be much closer to swiping right. Yeah, so he has a softer those, side. Those first three photos follow the one, two, three punch, especially with those portraits, and you're going to be miles ahead of most guys on the apps. One of the other things I'll say with the photos is, you know, as you're going out with your friends after you're single, like take photos of fun things that you like to do. Look at me. This right. is my me and my friends at a concert, or this me and my daughter yeah. skiing, or this is us on the boat. I, I think that those those are engaging too, and they also show that you have friends, which I think is usually a right. good thing, but you got to make sure I like one of the things that drove me nuts on online dating profiles is mm. women who would only post group photos. So you don't yeah. even know who she is. You're like, which, <laughs> right. which one is she? <laughs> um, and it, there's this wide range and like, you're just like, and then it's just left, you know, it's just, eh. right. Exactly. Or yeah, that's a common mistake. Do not post group photos. There's a general rule. 
don't do selfies unless you can take them really well, because typically you're going to take yourself, for, you're going to have six chins. Yeah. And, and just, you know, take your, take a portrait of you outside in natural light. I had a client named uh, Keith who came to me. He's getting no matches on Hinge. And I looked at his photos and he's a handsome guy, goatee, well-dressed fit. I'm sorry, not well. He, he is well-dressed, but not in his photo. And mm. in the photo, he was, he was wearing a t-shirt. He was in his garage and it was dark and he had a scowl on his face. Uh-oh. And I said, Keith, she, she doesn't want to date Dexter in his kill room. <laughs> she, she wants to date a, a, a cool medical professional assistant like you are. And he threw on a collared button down shirt, went outside, big, real smile. He had like 12 or 13 matches overnight. Yeah. So these, these changes and fixes can happen very quickly, but you um, okay. want to do it with that marketer's mindset. So I have a uh, a question for a friend of mine who, and I've got a couple friends who are five six, and one is highly confident and doesn't feel five six, feels much bigger. Mm. The other one I think struggles in this area and bemoans the fact that he is five six because all the women select out using the filters of, you know, I guess they want five ten and above or five eleven or six foot or whatever. Um, any tips for shorter men? Sure. Uh, I'll never BS anybody. If you're five, six and you list five, six, you're going to be weeded out of some women's, um, searches at the same time, keep something really important in mind. Do not mistake the fact that you're five, six as some kind of evidence that you're not attractive and can't mm-hmm. get dates on or offline women who want taller guys. It's not that they want to it's not that women want guys who are six, two, it's that women want somebody who's at least a little bit taller than she is. So if you're five, six, which makes you five, seven, five, eight with some nice shoes, then Mm -hmm. you're going to have most women from five, six or five, seven on down are still going to be very open to dating. Okay. So that's still a lot of women. So that's one kind of a mindset shift in terms of a strategic shift. Here's a thought. (laughs) I did this with a client. It went really well on your profile. Instead of five, six, put seven foot eight. (laughs) <laughs> put some extremely absurd um, height thing. Obviously, it's a joke. Not only will you be in every woman's search category, she's going to say, what WTF with your height? And then you can crack a joke and say, oh, let me guess. You only date guys who are um, uh, eight feet or taller. Is that who you yeah. are? Um, and then, of course, you can say, no, actually, I'm, I'm five, six, blah, blah, blah. And then st- so don't lie about it. Be honest yeah. with that forward. But you're lead- now you're leading with humor instead of insecurity and you can short circuit a woman's logical height rule. No pun intended. Do with jokes. (laughs) (laughs) Damn it, Connell. Don't use that word. I make dad jokes even when I don't even know it. Um, (laughs) So, but yeah, you can short circuit. See the thing about height, it's a logical belief that women have. However, Mm -hmm. if, if you're a cool guy, if you have a lot to offer, if you have that authentic value and you make it funny, uh, a woman will, will largely forget about that rule because, hey, you're a great guy. So don't be 5'6 on the app. Be um, seven foot seven. <laughs> well, I love the idea. Um, any other online dating profile tips before we wrap up? Yes, I think uh, your, your opener is going to be very important. I want to share with you my very favorite opener. Oh, please. Uh, one, it's, it's the best copy and paste opener that I've ever heard and tested. And I'm not a big copy and paste person. The mm-hmm. best opener is going to be a personalized opener where you find something about her profile that you like, and then comment on it and ask a question about it. That's still my favorite opener. And that's mm-hmm. going to change from woman to woman. However, if you just can't think of anything to say, you can essentially use what's called the clickbait opener. The clickbait opener, uh, I found it on is that full disclosure, not my, not my opener. I borrowed it from a guy who goes by text God. I like to give credit where credit's due. Mm, Text God mentioned this and I tried and it's great. The clickbait opener is you simply write, hey, name, whatever her name might be. Um, You know what's really interesting and different about your photos? Question mark. Winky face. I'm sorry. Winky face thinking emoji. So again, it's, hey, Rebecca, you know what's really interesting and different about your photos? Question mark. Now you're, instead of doing what most guys do, which is, hey, how's your day? Hey, you're hot. Yeah. Hey, what's up? You're, you're letting her know, you know, something about her 
that she wants to know. You're making, you're making yourself the key that unlocks the door into a little bit of insight into her. And that's really good at getting a woman to say, well, what is it? What's interesting and different about my photos? So it gets a really, really high response rate. Now you got to come up with something for the next line. <laughs> so mm-hmm. you have to actually find something interesting <laughs> if and when she writes back. But the nice thing about this is it's, it, it feels like a personalized opener. And then when she replies, you can make it truly personalized and say, well, I just want, you know, I just saw your photos and realized that, you know, you, you take a really good selfie. Most women don't. You take a really great selfie and you seem really confident. You come up with something. So the copy and paste, it's called the clickbait opener. Um, it just, it creates curiosity and works the same way a, a clickbait headline would work on BuzzFeed. Because, hey, we're marketing here. We're trying to get the attention of very sought after women. And sometimes you got to use some marketing moves. So random, unsolicited dick pics, (laughs) thumbs down? And then, and then send 27. (laughs) I'm amazed Um, at how many women tell me they just would get unsolicited dick pics. I'm like, wow, really? Like, it's kind of like the guy driving by the woman walking on the street and cat calling her. And it just, it always has me scratching my head. Like, has that ever worked for you? And if so, yeah. Who? responds well to that here's another good line to that to your point that has worked really well for me hey maybe it helped me attract my my girlfriend um use the any guy can use this on his profile uh this worked really well for me last year quote i'll never send you a dick pic but i might send you a duck pic and then i have a little (laughs) duck emoji it's so stupid and and childlike but at the same time and I got so many women on Bumble opening, sending me that first message saying, yeah. hey, where's my, where's my duck pic? And then I would send them a duck pic. Uh, that sends a message of, hey, I'm not like those clueless guys. Yeah, I like and it. It, also, it plays it off also, the trope. It plays off the trope and it creates a fun, playful, duck-based frame. And that, that playfulness, even though that's almost childlike, that's part of, quote, man to woman because it's not informational and logical. It's, hey, let's play. Let's have some fun. Let's swap some duck pics. And that's a really nice, playful, G-rated way to start a conversation. So yeah. feel free to try, and I, I try think the out. Playful is a big, playful is a great idea, a great approach. The other thing I like with um, the pr- online dating profiles is to just go do a search for top 10 uh, male profiles on Match, for example, and just kind of read through them and just yeah. get some ideas. And you can kind of pattern what your profile looks like based off of theirs. Cause I, there's a bunch of different ways you can go. You can go, you know, values based, you can go humor, you can yeah. go bullet lists. Um, but you got to put some time and effort into them as well and try different, right. different profiles. And I think that you always want to come back to this idea of being authentic, what I call radical authenticity. I want a woman. I, so, so yes, model your bio and see what other people have done as long as it feels like you. Absolutely. So I, because you're going to go on a date with don't cut and women. paste. Exactly. You, Cause you want to, you want a woman to meet the same guy she sees on the profile. And has been Absolutely. With. otherwise there's, there's this weird incongruent disconnect and she'll feel like that's not the real you. So totally model on what other people have done, but make sure you pour it into that, that authentic mold of who you are as a guy. So she, yeah, you know, thank she's you for getting the real pointing you. that out. And, and I think, um, the other thing is, and this seems painfully obvious, but use a current picture. Right. But like if you're going to say, I mean, like, I don't know how people think that a relationship is going to work when you start based on a lie. And, you know, this is me. And, you know, it's 20 years ago and 30 right. pounds lighter. Um, like you got to be, you got to be upfront. And if you're not comfortable with how you look right now, go to the gym, like start working out. Absolutely. Um, All right. So Connell, this has been amazing. I think there's a lot, a lot of good material here. So thank you very much for your time. And this is part one of two. We're going to do a second part uh, as soon as we can schedule it. So again, the book is Dating Sucks, But You Don't. I highly recommend it because I really like Connell's approach. And I I just agree with everything that he's saying. You can find him at datingtransformation.com. And Connell, any in just wrapping up, anything that I didn't ask you that I should have well, I guess we can get to it in the second part, but any closing thoughts? One, one final thought, especially on first dates. I like to go into a date. You mentioned earlier about finding things that you can be curious about on dates. 
And I love that you said that because to me, that's about being really present, being in the moment with her. And this is easier said than done, but on your next date, think of, think of the idea of how can I be really present, active listening, because when you are present and you're also being your authentic self, those, those witty, cool, awesome, magnetic lines that you want are going to arise much more organically. So give her the presence of your presence as my closing tip. Yeah. I, I think presence is a buzzword these days for CEOs and for all of yeah. us, it should be. And, and in dating particularly. So, you know, for instance, silence your phone. Like, right. don't be checking your phone during the first date. Um, right. So and anyway, don't bring and don't bring the fish you caught until the second. Date. <laughs> That's when you actually bring the fish to show her that you're a provider. Yeah, which is <laughs> not great. Anyway, uh, Connell, this has been a blast. Thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. Oh, it's my pleasure. Thank you so much for having me on, John. This was so fun. And that's it for this episode of The Evolved Caveman. If you love this show with Connell, then please be sure to like, review, rate, and share with all your friends. And if you didn't like it, you don't have to do a damn thing. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening to the Evolved Caveman Podcast. If you like what you've heard, support us by subscribing, leaving reviews, and sharing the podcast with friends and colleagues. For the latest, most powerful tools to connect with like-minded men, join the Facebook group at The Evolved Caveman. Follow Dr. John on Instagram at The Evolved Caveman, all one word, or join the email list by visiting guidetoself.com. 